Hi, I'm Femi OK. I'm taking you deep into the Marvel Cinematic Universe today to meet Kamala Khan. She's just an ordinary Muslim American teen who happens to have some very special superpowers. Let's take a look at Miss Marvel. Okay, so first off, I just want to say, I get it. You get what? High school. Kamala. Kamala. Another adventure shirt. Cute. She thinks I'm some kind of weirdo. You are a weirdo. Boys. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> you're kind of on my shirt. Sorry. But you're staring out the window in your little fantasy land. Kamala. Hey. Already? Really? Come on, like... Do I have to figure out my whole future before lunch, or is it really... Maybe they're right. I spend too much time... in fantasy land. That is not you. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who save the world. That's a fantasy, too. Well, our guests today are involved with the production of Miss Marvel. They're going to be talking about the joys, the challenges of making it, and what the production means to Muslims around the world. I'm going to say hello to Travina, to Rij, to Azar. Thank you so much for being on the stream today. I'm going to get you to introduce yourself to our international audience and tell them your connection with Miss Marvel. Travina, you start. I'm Travina Springer. I play Taisha Hillman Khan on Miss Marvel. Lovely to have you. Hello, Rij. Welcome to the stream. Introduce yourself to our viewers. Hello. Hello. I'm Rish Shah. I play Kamran, and he's the new boy in town. A little bit of mystery to him. Yeah. Very nice. Azar, so lovely to see you. Great to have you on the stream. Please introduce yourself to our viewers and your connection to Miss Marvel. Sure. Well, thank you for having me. My name is uh, Azhar Usman. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian from Chicago. And I play a character called Najaf, the Giro King. Nice. Uh, it's a small recurring comedic role. Very nice. Yeah. Nice to see you in the Miss Marvel universe as well. All right, so, viewers, if you're watching right now and you're on YouTube, you've got comments, you've got questions about Miss Marvel. How did they make it? What was their thought process? <laughs> what happened behind the scenes? We have juice. We're happy to share it with you. Comment section is live right here. I am going to get you guests. First of all, we talked to some, some little ones about Miss Marvel and what it meant to them. And this mm. is what they told us. I want you to lay, take a look at this video and then immediately react. Let's take a look at the youngsters your future critics. I love Miss Marvel because of the funny jokes. We both love Miss Marvel because there is a Muslim superhero that represents girls like us. We both love, love Miss Marvel. Marvel. Go Kamala Khan! She's scared of jinn and goes to the mosque while she goes to school and has many friends and gets in trouble with her teachers. This made me really happy and proud that there could be a girl just like me being a superhero. Some of my favorite scenes are ones that showcase Muslim traditions like painting henna and the discussion of jinn. All right, let's start with Travina. Travina, you're watching those little girls and you're thinking, what? <laughs> it's really just amazing and overwhelming to see the, the positive feedback and what um, this series means to so many young people. I'm just really touched and <laughs> a little emotional um, about it. I bet it's huge for these young girls and children to see someone that reminds them of themselves and they can see themselves and their family in this character. So I'm just excited and really Rish, I'm moved by it. Oh my goodness. Rish, don't cry. You'll make us all cry. Rish, oh. Rish, <laughs> Rish, you were smiling so broadly as those, those little ones were like, yes! I can see myself. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's about, right? That's mm. like the coolest part about being able to be involved in the show. And I have young nieces and literally got a message from their dad, my, my cousin today. And he was saying that they just sat down and saw the first few episodes. And the fact that, yeah, people can relate and see themselves and whether that's young boys or girls and people who look like us. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful thing. And that makes me really proud. And I'm glad that they can see themselves and are really excited and feel like they finally have someone to look up to. So what, what, what caught me by surprise is if somebody had told me that Disney was going to make a series and it was going to portray Muslim American life 
everyday life, normal life, nothing special apart from the supernatural part, I would be surprised. I would be thinking, Disney? Yikes! <laughs> uh! Azar, what happened? Because that wasn't the case. Wait, wait, wait that, that's a very ambiguous uh, uh, statement. Would you be like, Disney, I... yikes? Yikes. Because you would be happy, or would you be like, yikes? I, would, I was anxious until I saw the first four episodes, and then my shoulders went down and I relaxed. Azar, wow. tell me about your, ex your experience working on this, because it is a big job to take Miss Marvel as a Muslim American teen, put it on the screen, and then for it to connect with people. That's right. I'm, I mean, I think, first of all, um, kudos to the team that uh, mm -hmm. produced the whole show. And I think that um, especially, I would say, the original team that created all the source material, I'm talking specifically about um, you know, G. Willow Wilson, and of course, Sana Amanat, who has been involved from the very beginning, co-creating co the character of Kamala Khan, but then also shepherding the TV show uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because I think that, um, you know, whatever authenticity people are able to feel in the show today really has its origin in the authenticity of, of the writers and the producers and the original creative team that really took incredible pains to make sure that every detail was indeed authentic and was indeed yeah. attempting to do, to do justice to what is ultimately a very nuanced experience. Uh, being a Muslim in the United States, or I imagine in Europe as well, uh, you know, it's a very interesting time to be part of that minority. And certainly growing up, uh, I think for young people coming up in the post 9-11 world, quote unquote, the prejudices, the biases, the cultural and social attitudes mm -hmm. some folks have towards Muslims and Islam can make it even more difficult. And so a show like this, where clearly young people are responding in a very positive way and they're feeling seen and they're feeling represented, you know, that's really just a, a tremendous pleasure for all of us who are involved in the show. Our audience on YouTube are wondering, they haven't seen Ms. Marvel yet, what are Ms. Marvel's superpowers? What can you tell us about her superpowers so far in the series, Rich? Because she's just getting Ooh. to grips with them, <laughs> which I, I, I love that portrayal. Yeah. It's like if you finally, suddenly find you've got superpowers, <laughs> you're not going to be all slick with them. And she's not slick, uh -huh. right? She's definitely not slick. I think that's yeah. why she's so relatable, though. She's, yeah. You know, she's one of... She's got, like, very normal problems surrounding her. I mean, she's dealing with high school and boys and religion and strict parents and then yeah has these newfound powers and it's a matter of like how do I even hone this in whilst going through all of that and normal teenagehood um and yeah I think one of the reasons that Kamala is so endearing as a character is like you said she's not slick and <laughs> you see her kind of taking her time and training with Bruno and trying to figure it out and I mean she takes inspiration literally from Donkey Kong you know, that, that just goes to show, like, where her imagination runs wild. And I think that's why she's probably one of the coolest superheroes out there. Yeah. She's like Miles Morales meets Peter Parker, but cooler because she's Kamala Khan. And, um, yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, throughout the series, we do see her powers really progress. And as we know, she is going to be in the Marvels. And I'm excited to see how things develop going into that as well. Um, but it's definitely an exciting start with these yeah. first four episodes. So she's going to be in the movies, and at the moment we're just learning what her powers are. So she can stop herself from falling because sort of icicles or stars shoot out from parts of her body. I'm not sure what they are. Hide yeah. light. And then she's got light. Uh, yeah, hide light. Hide light. Exactly. She's got lights that happen. Sometimes her nose at school <laughs> glitters. It's out so of control. Cool. Watch the series and then you'll find out what her superpowers are because she's trying to work them out herself. Um, Abra spoke to us a little bit earlier and Abra is a video host and producer and was really curious about one thing. Travina, have a listen to Abra and then answer her question if you can. Here she is. My question for the Miss Marvel team is, why do you think this show resonates with so many people who aren't Muslim or who aren't Pakistani? And what considerations went into making sure that that would be the case? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I would 
think that people are really resonating with the series, which I'm very excited about and not completely surprised because we knew we were making something really special when we were creating this. And I think people can relate to Kamala. Like she's an ordinary teenager living her life. And most of us have experienced being a teenager in those struggles or will experience that or currently experiencing. And I think that there is somebody in everyone that people can see and they can relate to each of the characters. It's a coming of age story. It's just a really well-written, well-performed, well-created story and people connect to good storytelling. And I think it doesn't matter what the background is um, of who's being portrayed on TV. Like people in marginalized groups watch, watch shows that don't reflect them and can enjoy the story. So I think the same thing is happening here. Phenomenal. And Iman is amazing. Like, you can't watch her and not fall in love with who she is and her portrayal of this character and the world that we've created. So I think that's why people really like it and they enjoy it. And people are also learning about South Asian culture, Pakistani culture and Muslimness, And it's being shown in such a positive light Mm -hmm. and just in a different light, I think, than people are used to seeing, which is probably very interesting. People want different. And that's what we're giving them. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, a hundred percent. Sorry, I was jumping in there. Yeah, I was yeah. like, go ahead. That's so true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's go ahead. so true. And also, like, I think as well as the themes of identity and like one of my favorite parts of the most recent phase is obviously Shang Chi, and so many people have been able yes. to relate to that story. You know, it's one of the coolest origin stories we have, yeah. right? Mm. And you know, people of all cultures watch that, and same with Black Panther. And yeah, we have the opportunity to do the same here. But I think people like really relate to the fandom aspect of this show. I mean, in episode one, we go to Avenger Cop. Oh, and wait, she wait. literally like pause, 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 yeah. pause for a moment because there's a little clip I've got, and I'm going to go straight <laughs> back to you a little quick because <laughs> because because Kamala wants to go to AdventureCon, but her parents yeah. won't let her. <laughs> but then the big brother talks her parents into it, so now she can go, and then yeah. this happens. As far as your dressing goes, I have a surprise for you. The Hulk! <laughs> wait, wait, best is yet to come. Ta-da! Oi, Jackie the Buddy! See, Kamala, big Hulk and little Hulk. Bada Hulk or Choti Hulk. Huh? So cute you all will look. Oh, huh? oh my God. Rish. <laughs> uh, Ooh, cringe, cringe, cringe. Oh my god. So no, funny. I love it. That's the part that I feel people can relate to being a teen and your parents won't let you do stuff, particularly if you're a young girl, okay, and particularly if you come from immigrant parents. You don't even have to be Muslim, Pakistani, American to appreciate that. You can be any immigrant child uh, from any, any immigrant family and you, you get that, that, that dynamic. Yeah. Um, and, and then you're and your parents trying to understand the culture that you love, your pop culture, not quite getting it. It's interesting, yeah. um, though, Azar, and I'm, I'm going to bring this up because there has been um, some pushback about how... Muslim culture is portrayed. And I want to bring that into the conversation because it's not everybody saying, this is fantastic, although you've got incredible (coughs) reviews and people really enjoying it. There are some people that are upset about the way that Miss Marvel doesn't wear her jupe, for instance. She doesn't cover her hair. There are elements of the story that they are not enjoying. Let me bring in Mustafa, and I know that you're going to be out of debate, not with him live, but after his video comment finishes. Here he is. As a British Pakistani, Miss Marvel is incredible to watch. Unfortunately, in its current form, it's still somewhat a victim of its own success. It's managed to pull off being Muslim without being Islamic, but it's also alienated large parts of its potential audience. Both non-Muslims and conservative Muslims are reluctant to tune in because they don't think the show caters towards them, which is a shame because Miss Marvel has the potential to be the family sitcom to define the next decade of television. Azar, go for it. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, this is an impossible... uh 
impossible comment to respond to, I believe. You know, I, I'll say this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm participating in this conversation uh, because of my involvement in Miss Marvel, where I'm involved as an actor. Uh, you know, I also am a writer and a producer, and I work on a show called Rami, um, which is on Hulu. Mm. Not to plug it, but it's also yeah, Disney Ra property. Rami's been on the and stream. We love Rami. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> and that show has way more adult and controversial themes. Very but adult. My point is, you know, we've, yeah, my point is we've heard this similar response from, I guess, use the term conservative Muslims, you know, whatever label you want to use. I think there is something to be said for, um, there's a space in between kind of reality and fiction, right? And that's where artists take artistic licenses. Mm -hmm. And um, what often can be triggering for some Muslims is when an artistic license is taken by a creative person and the audience feels that, hey, that license is going too far. It's not faithful either to the religion or to the teachings of the religion or how Muslims actually are, et cetera, et cetera. These are nuanced debates that are impossible. You can never make everyone happy. I'll just say that uh, I, I arrived at the clarity about this while working on Rami, and I feel the same way about Ms. Marvel. You know, if you're watching a TV show to teach you about religion, you know, you've already lost. Like, go, go get your religion from religious people and get your entertainment from TV people, and never the twain shall meet. Mm. Yeah. I think the really beautiful thing that's here, what, I can understand what the, I can understand what the criticism is here, but then I'd like to counter and say, I think the beautiful thing about Miss Marvel is that it depicts different kinds of Muslims. We live on a spectrum. There's not one way. We're not a monolith of the community. I'm Muslim. I don't veil. And I know plenty of Muslims that don't veil. I know plenty of Muslims who do, and then Muslims who veil in different ways. And I think what's really beautiful and well done about the series is that it displays different ways to show up in your Islam. And there's not a right and wrong way. And we want the show to be accessible to everyone. And also we're depicting Muslims in America. That's something I think that might fall, but people might not catch, you know, yeah. this is how Muslims in, he's in Jersey city. And I think that's really cool for people to see, oh, they do this. Muslims can do that. And there's not one way, which is the truth of my experience as a, with some person who lives in America. So I think that's important. Yeah. Can, can I add one more comment? Because I, I appreciate what Trevina is saying tremendously. And I want to add one more detail. Because I've been doing stand-up comedy. Both Trevina and I are stand-up comedians. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was also part for many years of a show called Allah Made Me Funny, the official mm -hmm. Muslim comedy tour, doing stand-up comedy. And we got all kinds of, you know, criticism and feedback from Muslims. And I had to make this point over and over. And I think it bears repeating. You know, Islam as an ancient global world religion, it is a set of timeless universal principles. And when it is applied, when those principles are applied in a particular social or cultural context, you know, Islam in Egypt is Egyptian. Islam mm -hmm. in Persia appears Persian. Islam in Arabia is Arabian. Islam in India is Indian. And therefore, Islam in America necessarily is American. And that means it is culturally and racially diverse. It is theologically diverse. It is big tent Islam that allows and has as much breadth and openness and acceptance for every possible interpretation under the sun. And that's part of what I think makes uh, Islam in the United States so unique and different, but also special and something that is it should be celebrated. And I think the show does indeed capture a, a lot of that and the, the diversity of of the racial diversity, the spectrum of types of Muslims, religiosity, et cetera. All of that is part of portraying Muslims actually as they actually are, which I think is actually extremely authentic. Yeah. Let me bring in a few more comments from our YouTube audience who are watching right now. Liz Rainey says, I love Ms. Marvel as another brown kid obsessed with comics. It's so relatable. And then Luis Herrera says, I'm not Muslim, so this show has been great for my family in order to know more about Muslim culture. I think the only way I would love to describe it to people who are not Muslim are that there are little Easter eggs. You know, like sometimes mm. when you're, we were playing video games and the little, oh, you go over um, a little something and then you get extra points. <laughs> I feel like that's <laughs> the same for Ms. Marvel. If you know, you know. If you don't, Google it. And there's the little yeah. extra points that are going on. Um, Javina, I think you are one of the extra points because there is no, there's, there's no baggage involved with you marrying Ms. Marvel's 
older um, big brother. Yeah. But we know that in America, the African-American Muslims and then South Asian Muslims, there's a whole trope going on, there's drama, it's a difficult conversation, it's an issue, but it's just there. Like, it's wonderful. It's just there. Yeah. I Women love that actually about. Yeah. Uh, I love that. Like, Taisha Hillman marries Amr Khan mm -hmm. in the series. Mm -hmm. And Taisha is a black American Muslim girl from Jersey. And, you know, um, Amr is Pakistani American. And they're just in love. It's very, it's presented in a very matter of fact way. Mm -hmm. And it's celebrated. And I think it's so beautiful and powerful to see. Um, with some love in that way, because you don't see it on a scale like this. And I've, I've experienced um, Afro-Asian um, interracial mm. marriages and friendship. People who have those relationships and to see it on television is wonderful. But the truth of the matter is because there is a lot of anti-Black racism in these communities that exist. And it's not just in America. It's a global thing. And I think for Miss Marvel to depict as it is in the comics. She's not created for the series. It is in the comics and the source material. And for their love to be just celebrated and shown in such a positive light and the family just accepting it's not like controversy, controversial, I think it's really important and powerful. And one of the things that I loved, I mean, I talked with Sana about that early when we were filming, like, are we going to talk about like the race thing or colorism? And we were like, no, nope, they just love her and we're moving on and accepting it. And I, thought I that love that. Wonderful. I love that. <laughs> I've got one more thought. I'm going to I'm going to put this one to you, Rish. This is Aman Ali. He's a writer and performer. And he sees that this production, Miss Marvel, is incredibly important. Here's his thoughts. And I'd love to hear yours. Here's Aman. I remember the years, you know, 10, 15 years ago where you would get on stage and someone would pull a microphone out of your hand saying comedy is haram, art is haram, blah, blah, blah. And now to have a show that is in the Marvel Universe uh, about a badass superhero uh, is absolutely incredible. And I think one of the biggest highlights for me is this show truly is a love letter to the Muslim community. Yes. It's messy, it's complicated, it's layered, but it's awesome, it's loving, it's so warm. And I think that to me is really what brings me so much joy. Oh, Rich, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I mean, yeah, it's been made with so much heart. I mean, like we've said, everybody who's been involved in this project, yeah, it's, it was amazing to go to set and see so many brown faces and so many people who can relate to the culture. Um, for me personally, and I can only speak for myself, but I know other people have gone on a similar journey of identity and kind of wearing our culture with pride. I mean, representing Desi culture and um, that that's something which I struggled with growing up. And so it's really cool to be able to see that it's being shown finally and in, in a positive light. And, you know, I think we have to remind ourselves as well that, yeah, this is one story of one girl and it's Kamala Khan. And hopefully it allows for more creators within the industry to be able to have a chance to tell their stories. You know, um, we're very lucky to be in this position. And it's amazing that people are enjoying mm -hmm. seeing that and our culture being shown in a positive light. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully it's just the start of, of this movement and it becomes kind of a normality, you know? Yeah. That, that's really the goal here, I think, mm -hmm. um, when it's, you know, we can, we can imagine aliens within the MCU yeah. and stuff, so why is it so hard to believe uh, yeah. brown Pakistan brown girl. Teacher? A little round girl from New Jersey. Perfect place to yeah. end it on. Travina and Rish <laughs> and Azar, thank you so much for joining us. If you thank want you. to see Miss Marvel, you. you're so welcome. Thank you. If you want to see Miss Marvel, you can watch Miss Marvel on Disney Plus anytime when you're not watching Al Jazeera. I will leave you with one last scene from the production. This is the wedding. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Never have I seen a couple so certain of their love as they are of themselves. Do you accept Amr Khan as your husband? I do. Do you accept Amr Khan as your husband? I do. Do you accept Amr Khan as your husband? <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> do you accept Taisha Hillman as your wife? I do. Mabrook alaikum. You are now husband and wife. <laughs> Take me! Oh.